ex-girlfriend ditched me for an after party, so I dumped her and kicked her out. I, 24 male and my girlfriend, 23 female, and began dating in college. Last week, Anne invited me to her co-workers, Joe Party. I had heard a lot about him in the past, and he and she really seemed to have a lot in common, especially with their taste in music. Apparently he was an amateur musician with a fairly successful YouTube channel. Joe initially invited only Anne, but when she asked him if I could tag along, he said it was fine. The party was on Saturday evening. It was a fun party with about 30 people, held at a restaurant Joe had rented out. Towards the end, though, I wandered into Anne's little discussion group, and I immediately got the feeling that nobody really wanted me there, most of all Anne. It was her, Joe, and a few other people. Thinking that I was just imagining things, I hung around and listened to Joe basically boast about himself the whole time. A little while later I wandered off to get myself a drink and chat with a few other people. Eventually the time to leave came around, and I went to find Anne again. Joe approached me at that point and said that he was having an after party over at his house. I was going to refuse, but then he said, sorry man but only Anne is invited while clapping me on the shoulder. I first told him not to touch me, and then said she's not going. He informed me that she had already accepted the invitation. I texted Anne immediately to ask where she was. She responded sorry on the way to Joe's place. I'll see you tomorrow love you. I asked if she knew I wasn't invited, and she then left me on read. Texts after that were all ignored. I drove home furious. I stayed up all night, and finally Anne walked in the door at 5.42 am. I know because I was by the window watching. I recognized the car as Joe's and the driver as Joe. Nobody else was in the car. Anne waved to him cutely and laughed at something he said. Anne came inside and acted surprised to see me still up. At that point I flatly told her that we were done, and she had the rest of the day to move out. Anne was at first confused with me, and then I told her that she can just move in with Joe. She rolled her eyes and said nothing happened. She gave me this spiel about my insecurities and imagination. I said it didn't matter. After this back and forward arguing, Anne finally relented and sarcastically thanked me for wasting the best years of her life. Anne finally moved out yesterday, and it was pretty dramatic. She said that she loved me and that I was throwing away everything over a party. Did I do her wrong here? I feel like I'm getting gaslighted. Relevant comments. She left you at a party she invited you to, went to another party without communicating with you and ghosted you when you messaged her. I am sorry but she doesn't care or respect you, at least you are no priority, and her colleague seems to be more important. I would never leave my partner I came with to a party stranded at a party and then gaslight him for being angry. Seems you're her safety person the one who should wait for her and take care of her and that's it. Not the idiot. I wouldn't do this to a regular friend neither, let alone a partner with whom you're supposed to be ride or die. 100%. This is a crap way to treat a friend. Your partner. Seems the I love yous are shallow. From her comment that she wasted the best years of her life she is either naive or manipulative. Life does not just go downhill from 23. In her case, it actually might. She threw away her home and relationships to F a YouTuber with a guitar. Not even a rich one, since they work together. Even if she didn't sleep with him she left you at a party without saying goodbye, and went to a party she knew you weren't invited to. Doesn't respond to your text, doesn't tell you what's going on and then tries to downplay your valid feelings. She has no respect for you. You absolutely made the right decision. You deserve better than that. Not the idiot. That's an incredibly suspicious move on her part and the lack of communication. Ignoring your texts. Leaving the party without even saying goodbye at least. She 100% is doing something with Joe. She wouldn't have left abruptly without you and ignore you the entire night if she wasn't. She's trying to play dumb and clearly has no issues disrespecting you. You made the right decision. I'd say I'm 95% sure something happened with Joe at that after party. I have no evidence. Girlfriend. The way she waved him goodbye, the way she laughed when he talked, the way that she was actively listening to him at the party, those are mannerisms she used to have with me. Then there was the thing with Joe's stupid macho power play of putting his hand on my shoulder. It was like he was mocking me because he knew what was going on. Update. About two weeks ago, I came here for moral guidance after breaking up with and kicking my girlfriend out for going to an afterparty with her male co-worker, who outwardly stated that I was not invited. Just about everyone in the post was convinced that Anne had cheated on me with Joe. The moment she left, I felt as if I had lost interest in her, Joe, and both of their lives forever. But a couple of days later, morbid curiosity got the best of me, and I decided to find his Instagram through Anne's. I don't know if I was looking for closure or validation for refusing to even discuss the issue with Anne, but I found both. First, a few hours after Joe drove Anne back to my place, 
he made an Instagram post about potentially doing a cover for Scotty Doesn't Know by Lustra. The comments were full of people saying he was going to hell with laughing crying emojis and the shushing emoji. I recognized some of the commenters as people who had attended the party. At first, I didn't know what it was about, but after looking up the lyrics, it became clear. Here's the first line of the song. Scotty doesn't know that Fiona and me do it in my van every Sunday. So yeah, class act, he is. Catchy song, though. But it gets better. I know this wasn't healthy, but I kind of kept up with Anne and Joe's social media. They went full mask off. Another few days later, Joe posted a picture of Anne sitting on his lap. I could tell that based on the sofa he was sitting on. This was not even taken at the after party, but at the party that I went to. I must have been talking to someone else or in the bathroom when it was taken. I will say that I was severely depressed and, on a certain level, probably still am. It wasn't even really about Anne, but that literally nobody from the party was willing to give me a heads up. Anne and I were publicly dating. We showed up together. People knew I was her boyfriend. But I guess when my back was turned, they were laughing at me. The only thing that doesn't make sense to me at this point is why she even wanted to keep me around as a partner. When I kicked her out, she was legitimately upset. Was this a pride issue where she wanted to be the one to dump me? Was it the thrill of screwing around with her co-worker behind my back? Or was this some logic that only the human equivalent of a dumpster could understand? I may never know. It doesn't matter anymore. I want to thank everyone who responded to the last post, and I really want to give a special thanks to those who posted or DM me with similar experiences. Without exaggeration, I don't know what I'd be doing right now if it weren't for your comments. Some comments. Her reaction was out of self-interest. With you kicking her out, she had to find someone else to live with. Joe won't want anything more than no-strings-attached sex. Remember, those were her friends and co-workers, not yours. It shows who she is by the company she keeps. I'm proud of you. You were quick not to accept her disrespect or gaslighting you. Onward and upward. If that D comes at you to make fun of you, brag or for whatever reason, just tell him congratulations on winning your perceived competition. Enjoy your prize of a cheating woman, and enjoy your leftovers, as crumbs are the only thing he'll ever be able to get. While it's an idiot thing to say, this is in fact the reality of the situation, and it'll drag both him and your ex back down to earth, and show that their actions has no effect on you. He's getting off on making you a cuck, as hinted by the song he wishes to cover. I won't be surprised if he switches Scotty's name with yours or dedicates it to you. Doing this will take away his perceived power over you. One of my old friends was once in a situation like this and unfortunately bumped into the, the other guy. Cocky little crap said something like sorry about that, win some lose some. My friend looked straight to him and said this I lost a cheating girlfriend. You want a girl that you know is able to cheat and lie to your face. Oh and tell her to stop emailing me saying that she is sorry and that she thinks of me often. I don't want to block her but I will. Turned his back to the guy and left. My friend was visibly upset as we walked away so I don't know where he mustered the calm he had displayed. Though I did laugh out loud when I asked about the emails and he said it was a lie, just wanted to mess with the guy. The other couple lasted three months. Buddy the type of D Joe is he will be the guy who likes the chase and power of sleeping with women who have partners. I am 99% certain he won't actually want her now she is single and available, and he will move on to his next target soon enough. People like him just enjoy the sneaking around behind the partner's back and the power plays that come with flaunting it under your nose. By kicking her out you have done the one power play he can't handle mark my words. Story 2. Hello all. My husband and I have been arguing about this all day and I need some outside perspective. My husband picked my daughter, Cindy up from school and he saw her speaking to a schoolmate that she had previously had a crush on. For context, last year during a sleepover my husband and I overheard Cindy's friends lightly teasing her over having a crush on this boy. My husband also gently teased her with some innocent jokes like Cindy and boy sitting on a tree kissing type of silliness and he sometimes brings it up randomly to tease her, like asking her if she wants to invite her boyfriend when we go on family outings. She never actually dated him or is even friends with him as far as we know, her dad just likes to tease her. Anyway, apparently over the summer the boy was injured in an accident, and he missed the first couple of weeks of school as a result. When my husband was picking her up, he saw them talking and noticed that the boy had significant scarring on his face and hand. When he asked her what happened to him and what they were talking about, saying that the boy looked disappointed she explained to him about his accident, and that he was just asking her out on a date but that she turned him down. My husband was furious at her and scolded her for being so shallow as to reject him because his appearance has changed. Cindy was crying when she got home. She told me all this and insisted she was polite when turning him down and was just not interested in him romantically anymore. 
I told my husband to apologize to my daughter and that he never should have made her feel bad for turning down anyone's romantic advances. I told him that our daughter is old enough to decide who she is attracted to and it would be cruel of her to have said yes out of pity, thus leading him on. My husband is now saying that he sees me differently and that I should be ashamed for teaching Cindy to be a shallow monster and ableist. He is also angry that I undermined him when he was scolding our daughter and says we should not undermine each other's authority when disciplining our child. I was not doing it to undermine him. I just think it's not healthy to make our daughter feel guilty and shamed for not being interested in someone. I do feel bad for the boy but I don't think it is anyone's place, neither mine nor my husband's, to tell Cindy she has to date someone or she's a bad person. Am I the idiot? Edit. Wow I did not anticipate this getting so many responses when I wrote it last night before bed. I'm trying to read through all the replies so I can approach this with my husband again later today. I'm also going to have a talk privately with Cindy about the situation. Thank you so much for all the responses. I feel more confident now in my choice to defend Cindy. My husband is not a bad guy. He didn't tease Cindy to hurt her it was to be playful, and Cindy didn't seem to bothered by it. She would usually brush him off when he made those jokes. I think my husband was short-sighted when it came to this situation but he is not a bad father and he really loves me and his daughter, even if he makes mistakes sometimes. Update. Hi everyone. I got a lot of responses yesterday, and I thought I should update on what happened since I posted. I wanted to address some things first that I saw in the replies. Many comments were either implying or outright saying that if my daughter's reasons for turning down the boy, I'll call him Sam for this post were primarily because of the change in appearance after his accident. Then that would mean my husband was right that she was a shallow monster and I was enabling her. This didn't sit right with me and hurt to hear. But people also pointed out that if the roles were reversed, and it was my daughter whose appearance had changed and was then rejected by a boy then I would probably be livid at the boy. Right. These comments stuck with me and really made me think more deeply about this whole situation. And I'm really glad I was asked these things because it made me realize what lessons I wanted my daughter to get from this situation. I realized that although I would be upset if this happened to my daughter, I would not be upset at someone for rejecting her so long as they treat her with respect and dignity. I would be upset at the unfair situation she was in. But I would never expect some random person to make it their mission to rectify this injustice at the expense of their own autonomy. I would instead comfort my daughter and explain to her that people are like puzzle pieces. Not all of them fit together and that just because a boy she liked wasn't her puzzle piece does not make her any less valuable or beautiful. And one day she might find someone who does fit well with her. The lesson I wanted my daughter to learn from this was that she was not shallow for rejecting someone romantically regardless of the reason, even if it was physical. That everyone is owed human decency and respect, but not romantic affection. Denying someone equal respect and dignity because of their appearance would be shallow but she did not do that. Her romantic affection is not a commodity to be distributed. It belonged to her, and she is not obligated to be fair when it comes to who she wants to share it with. It belonged to her alone, and is a privilege she gets to bestow on someone she likes and who treats her well. A lot of the comments really made me realize how important it is for Cindy to feel like her consent matters because what could start with just going on a date she doesn't want to go on could one day escalate into her being pressured or coerced into dangerous and traumatizing situations or abusive relationships. Thank you so much to the commenters who shared their stories which helped me realize how important this way. Some people claim that I would likely leave my husband if his appearance changed, but sorry to disappoint you guys because I would never do such a thing. I love my husband so much, my relationship with him is stronger than just dating or a crush. We built a life together and his appearance changing would not change that. We have been married for long enough that my attraction to him and love for him now go far deeper than looks. Maybe it would be a different story if we were just dating and barely knew each other, but things change once you make vows to each other to stick together in sickness or in health. Many people are claiming that my husband is a monster and abusive. It may seem that way if all you know about him is this one situation but he is a full human being. He does more for this family every day than I could ever express in one post. He has issues with anger and that he often says things he regrets during. But when he cools off, he is always open to listening and communication. I know now how damaging his teasing of Cindy about Sam was last year, and I will make sure that doesn't happen again. But I assure you all that this is something he has done out of ignorance, and not malice. He loves Cindy to bits and would never intentionally do something to harm her. Okay, on to what happened yesterday. Husband woke up and left the house early so I didn't get a chance to talk to him. When Cindy woke up, I made sure she was okay and told her I wanted to talk to her about what happened the day before. 
Her friend's mom gave her a ride home and she got here before my husband did so we were able to have a heart to heart. I told her that she doesn't need to explain to me or anyone why she changed her mind about Sam. And I explained to her all the things I mentioned above. That Sam was going through something very hard and she should be kind to him. But she does not owe him a date if she is not interested in him romantically. That she isn't shallow and should never feel pressured to do something with someone she doesn't want to do. And that her dad was upset and said things he didn't mean. Even so, he still loves her and so do I. She was starting to cry so I held her for a while. She told me she was upset more than anything that her dad thinks of her as a bad person. This broke my heart, and so I told her I would talk to dad about this when he gets home. When my husband got home, I told him we needed to talk about yesterday. He didn't want to at first but I insisted and told him it was about Cindy's well-being as she was still upset about it and even thinks that her own father thinks she is a bad person. This upset him and he said of course he didn't think that. I basically explained to him my thoughts above, and although he was a bit resistant at first and insisted that he just didn't want Cindy to become a shallow person, he really listened when I explained to him how people might take advantage of her if the future if she starts to feel like her consent, and her desires don't matter. I didn't show him the post I made but I wrote down some of the comments and stories and told them to him. I told him they were stories I found on Reddit from people who experienced something similar. I didn't show him my post because so many comments were unfairly painting him as a monster and I was worried it would make him defensive. I think it broke through to him because he was really upset at the thought of our daughter one day being manipulated into staying with someone who was hurting her. He went to talk to her privately in her room while I prepared dinner and afterwards she seemed a lot happier and was joking around with her dad again. Today, they're both planning to go bowling together as well. Thank you everyone for the advice, the stories, and for motivating me my decision to defend Cindy. You guys are awesome. Story 3. Looking for my next steps here as I'm still in college and three hours away from home. Long story short, I applied for a job for my last year of school which required a background check. When I found out I didn't get the job a couple of weeks ago, I wasn't too shocked as I'm sure a lot of people applied for the spots. What did shock me was when I got a letter on Tuesday from the employer which said information in my credit may have been used against me. It then listed a charged off account and multiple missed payments on an account. I've never been even a day late in my life for the one credit card I've had since I was 18. When I went to pull my credit, I saw the charged off account, which looks like it was last updated in June. Immediately, I figured my credit had been stolen and called my mom. She said if I didn't open the account, just to ignore it and if I get sued, tell the judge an unknown person stole my identity. That didn't make any sense to me as anyone could say that about anything whenever they get sued. When I told her I was probably going to talk to the cops about it, she said I wouldn't want those people in my life. My roommate said it sounded like my mom opened the account and doesn't want to get in trouble for it. I was able to speak with someone in the fraud department for the card and they got me some information about it. Several cash advances from an ATM about a block from my mom's house, along with a couple of stores in my hometown. I told my mom all of that and asked her to come clean. She refused and got mad at me for accusing her of stealing my identity. Finally I told her I am going to the police about it and she blew a gasket, saying she needed the money and to mind my business. She said I can't call the police because they might revoke her probation, felony battery charges from last year and she might end up doing time in county. I can't really sacrifice my future in this case and while I love my mom, I'm devastated she'd do this to me. I think I should go to the cops but I'm feeling some guilt about it. Update. I ended up filing a police report for identity theft. The day after I did it, I got a call from an investigator and we talked for about 20 minutes. We also talked a little bit about the job I applied for, which is federal, and he said their background investigator would definitely be pulling his report for the identity theft. Because of that, I decided to go through with charges. Last week, the investigator called me back to confirm I would be willing to testify against my mother, though he didn't think it would come to that and would likely end with a plea. I told him I would. Yesterday, my mom got arrested on her way home from work. She has an initial appearance this afternoon, but on her previous felony, it looks like a petition to revoke has been filed with a date later this month. I feel like she's going to snap like she's never snapped before on me when she gets out, probably later today. I don't place on answering the phone. Thank you so much for watching until the end. If you really like our videos, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.